Hello guys, welcome back. This is the Anime Alley, and let's continue on with Jade. Day 126. It fell over. Okay. Hmm. Got a shitload of shit to do. Uh, little warden would have been would have been appreciated. You three sure have a lot of energy, despite... Sorry, we just got so used to Jack using earplugs that... I bet she's enjoying her... Confil <laughs> somewhat. Being able to sleep without worrying about... Frisky roommates? I guess that's the desire for closeness made us... I guess the desire for closeness made us reduce awareness of our surroundings. Sorry, Titania. It's it's fine. I just didn't think you were already at the point where, um... It's a recent development. Anyway, moving on. Plans for the day, team? What's wrong? I'm part of the team now? Of course you are. After what we went through... <laughs> Cool. Anyway, I think I'll track down the magical duo and spend some time with them. In that case, I think I'll join you. Wanna give a round of thanks? There's that, yes. But there's also something I need to talk with Janara about. Something I've seen while using my old semblance on her. Sounds important. What exactly did you see, Evelyn? It... It could be really personal, so I prefer not to talk about it with anyone else but her for now. Your ice cream's melting. I can fix it later. That's a waste of aura. Better than using it on that sm <laughs> smart mass orders. Is that a fusion of smarm and smartass? Yeah. Quite fitting. I like it. Oh? Then I shall continue using it. Too bad I couldn't find a way to include Monster in it too. After what he did to... Janara? That was her name, yes. Poor girl, she's even younger than you and yet. Not what I... Come here. Ah. Hey! Thanks, mister. You're welcome, sweetheart. Now have a nice day. Hmm? Interacting with people is easier than I thought it would be. People in this world are used to people looking a bit queer because of fondness. But comparison to some of them, you're not that alien looking. As long as you avoid floating. And what about the fact that I'm talking to myself? I'm sure at least someone must have noticed. You're a young girl. Kids are expected to do silly stuff like that. Have an imaginary friend or two? Act like an adult when not interacting with others? Also, you're adorable. That's a big weapon. I guess it is. Not that I'm complaining too much. Humans have a lot of cool stuff. Especially sweets. Makes you wish you had some around and peek? Let's not get crazy now. She's talking to herself. No, she's talking to that ghost girl that's been hanging around them. But I thought she had to make herself visible to have herself to be heard by others. If I had to take a guess, Janara can talk and see her whenever she wants because she's a magic user. Villa, can you let me go already? No. I swear I'm over the head pat thing. It didn't really happen anyway. There you are. Hi, Janara. Evelyn, you're... different. Well, hair and eyes changed on their own, so I decided, what the hell? It... it looks good on you. And I'm happy to see you again. So, what have you... Have the two of you been up to? Alright, she can't 
without appearing. Silly me. Well, we should move this somewhere more private anyway, considering... Considering what? Yeah, considering what? I was trying to tell you something before I left Peak, remember? And now that I think about it, this may actually involve you as well, Titania. Sounds very private. Yes. We should eavesdrop. I agree. Either it's something Wester already knows, or it's something that he may potentially use against them. Either way, I'm tired of him getting his way. I'm itchy back. Does it seem like there's going to be any long-term negative effects, Miss Ivory? We managed to set your bones properly before Aura started healing the injuries. There's going to be no need for further surgery. At least that. So all I need is rest, I guess. Think you can manage that in the infirmary bed? You're well enough to move to your dormitory now. Considering all over each other those three should be at the moment, going to my apartment will be completely counterproductive to my healing. I'll stay right here, thank you very much. <laughs> I agree with your reasoning. All over? Each other? We will leave you to your rest, then. Come on, Professor. That means Penny and Miss Demerot? Oh? You didn't know? She's growing up fast, I guess. He probably didn't inquire much about Penny's love life after hearing about Noah. I guess I should have a talk with him. So you don't mind taking care of the data before you leave? Not at all, Professor Peach. Good afternoon, Miss Ivory. I don't think I've had a chance to thank you yet, Seal. No thanks necessary. It wasn't a personal favor I bestowed upon you. It was only the most logical course of action. I'm not talking about the mission. I'm talking about the pep talk you gave my partner. Well, more like a talk down to. Still, thanks. I feel like I've overstepped my boundaries a little. Maybe a bit, but... Still, thank you. None of my teammates are people who would feel happy about having someone dying for them. Especially because of a situation brought on by their own choices. I figured. Still, I don't think I'm familiar enough with Noah to warrant that kind of conversation. Probably. But you didn't do it because it was a logical thing to do, did you? It was a touchy subject, I guess. Um... Please do not pry further. I won't. I just wanted to say thanks. And I know Noah appreciates you as well. The collaborations are done. Calibrations are done. Please excuse me. <sighs> Seems like everyone has a story around here. Uh, I got too many painkillers in me to think about it properly right now. What the fuck? Oh boy. Come on in, Mr. Decab Geese. Headmaster. Sorry for intruding, children. Miss Goodwitch, we didn't hear you come in. Guess we were a bit too taken by cooking. How are you? I'm fine. Mr. T. Capkeys, the headmaster would like to see you. Me? Just me? Yes. Uh, are you sure? He specifically asked for the leader of Team Jade. I see. Jack is currently incapacitated and there's no way he doesn't know about that. So when he asked for the leader of Team Jade, 
I would have your report on the rescue mission in the Burrito Forest. Of course, Headmaster. What's his point here? We dropped him to the Burrito Forest at... And that was it. Further details about the final part of the operation will have to be asked of other participants for I was unconscious at that time. Yes, you were unconscious after saving Miss Dimrot. Yes. You haven't shared many details as to how that came to be, though, Mr. D. Cavies. There's not much to tell. I almost died, but I managed to get through to her. Get through to her. Yes. I find that difficult to believe, Mr. D. Cavies. Excuse me? I was notified by General Ironwood about Miss Demrod's situation. She's one of my subordinates, as you may remember, so I was entitled to the full explanation. Her problem was a degradation in her aura structure and consequently all her other functions. She wasn't simply possessed. It was a matter of fighting for control with someone else. She was a captive in her own body. And at that rate, her degeneration was going? Without specific equipment, there was no way to help her in a situation such as the one that you described. Shit. But there was no way saying that she got her help on the on her airship would have filled it. Flight as an explanation anyway. Except one, which has so far been known as a complete impossibility. I had to give him something. Let's not give him everything. Guess the cat is out of the bag. So, your semblance allows you to share your aura with others. Not only that, it also allows me to copy their semblances, so to speak. A powerful ability. Not in full, just a lesser version of them, but still, that's what it does. And nothing else? Yes. But I'm going to give you something else instead. It has a third sta three stages. I don't know what the third one does yet. Your guess is as good as mine. I see. This is insight was provided to you by your fiery guest. Yes. Before you offer, I'm not going to work for you. I wasn't going to, Mr. Teacap Geese. My roster is currently full. So Evelyn's still in it. You think so little of me, Mr. Teacap Geese. You don't really give the best impressions. Or reasons. Honestly, I don't know what to think of you, Headmaster. Hmm? Most of the actions you've taken towards us have been antagonistic. People seem to... Who equal parts dislike you and respect you, they may not always agree with your methods, but it seems that they value your reasons enough to trust you anyways, once they've known to them. An excellent summary. I can't say I would, I would agree with certain actions or decisions even if I knew about such reasons, but why not share it with us? With others? Because more important than me finding allies, Mr. T. Kapkis, is keeping certain truths a secret from the general populace. It actually works the other way around, Mr. D. Kapkis. I have to trust people for them to partake of this knowledge. I don't share it willy-nilly so that, that they trust me. And keeping these secrets is more important than someone's life. If it comes down to making that kind of choice, yes. Because revealing the truth would, ca would cause... I'm pretty sure that's supposed to cause an even more massive loss of life. Why are you telling me all this? Because your presence in this school, Mr. Tikakis, has affected my collaborators. Starting with your teammates, Ms. Ivory and Ms. Demrod had never been anything but excellent in their service. Hey Master, they started doubting you because of the things you had hidden from them coming to light. I didn't play nearly as big as a part as you like to believe. But it was your presence that caused the individuals that could unveil those truths to gather the veil. 
because they're after my life, Professor Ospin. This is not something I did willingly, obviously. But they were only exposed to it because of their ties to you, Mr. D. Kepkes. And in turn, your team has started affecting others, or having others gravitate to you, further sharing into your ties. Again, Headmaster, I have been doing nothing to directly oppose you. I know, Mr. T. Kapkis. You've only been doing what you think and feel is best, but the reality is that as well-intentioned as those actions may be, they more often than not end up being in contrast with what I want, if not downright damaging to my own cause. The ties you built with the people around you in such a short period of time are so strong that you are willing to risk your lives for each other. But more importantly, you gave no regards to anything else in the surface of that goal. Am I correct? Yes. You didn't even hesitate. What is there to, have to hesitate about such a question? So no matter, matter the long-term ramifications of any actions you might take, you still do it if it's to save someone you care about? Exactly. No matter the consequences, even if they come to affect the world around you, the very same world you live in, any consequences I will deal with as they come. Being afraid of what may come is not a valid reason for me to not try everything I can to help someone I love. The thing is, Headmaster... I chuckle and shake my head, glad that we have overcome a little ordeal with deeper implications than I thought. I can't help but agree with Penny. I too want us to be close, eccentricities and all. I want us to care for each other. Because right now, they are. You speak of the world, but to me, they're my entire world. They're your world. I have no memory of Remnant from before I woke up. I didn't grow up knowing it. I have no parents, no aspirations for the future or dreams, no ambitions. I'm not a complete person at all. Right now, it feels like I'm just a passenger in my own life, going with the flow of everything that happens to me and playing catch up with the rest of the world. It's like I'm some kind of generic character in a story made it so that readers can more easily put themselves in my shoes. The only thing that gives my life meaning right now? What started my life in the first place? It's Penny and the others. I see. I once knew someone like you, Mr. Decab Geese. Someone like me. Someone whose entire life was their loved ones, and who, out of love and devotion, went to unheard of extremes. They ended up damning themselves and everything around them. Twice. Wow, he's comparing me to Salem now. Wow, okay. Someone is, keeps on making the same mistake. I see. I see that you have your convictions, Mr. T. Gackies. That paired with your unusual circumstances forces me to now start considering you as a liability. And as such, at the end of the school solistical year, at the conclusion of the vital tournament, you will be expelled from Beacon Academy. But if you guys watch Ruby, you know at the end of the vital festival that things already go haywire. <laughs> Like I hadn't started thinking about that a possibility already. What about the others? Miss Paladina will go back to Atlas with General Ironwood and her father. As for Miss Demra and Miss Ivory, it will depend on them, but in any case, their attendance of Beacon Academy will also come to an end. I see. I'm sorry it had to come to this, Mr. Decapkeys. Sure doesn't feel like it. What? So where do you want to put Howie? We're going to go soon. I'm sorry, what? Where do you want to put Howie? Would you rather him in here or out there? 
I got my Howie in here. He won't chew anything, don't worry. I'll I'll get a blanket and put on the ground for him, he'll be fine. Well, I doubt there's anything for him to chew in here. No, he only chews food. He only likes food. And we'll give him a bone, too, so he'll be fine. And to give my viewers contacts on what's going on, bring Howie over here. Here. Yeah, I'll be slightly babysitting this cute little dog right here. Show him in front of the camera. <laughs> Big puppy. <laughs> Howie, look at the light. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be watching over that dog for a little bit. A little bit. Hold up, Mike. Sure doesn't feel like it. That's because it isn't. He doesn't care at all about any form of life around him. I guess this conversation is over. Not quite yet. If you please, a question. What is it? The young witch, I guess we could call her. Just make sure he doesn't burp and stuff. Yeah. He usually doesn't, but if you knock her, if he just was knocking, he'll hey. burp. Hey, puppy. Hey. Uh. Hey, Abby. You want to go on my bed? <laughs> Abby, sit. Sit down. Howie, just go to your blanket. Can you go to your blanket? Don't look at me like that. Don't be cute. Can I read? Do you mind if I read? Are you gonna leave me be? Are you gonna chew on your bone? Or are you just gonna stare at me? <laughs> I should do like a Howie cam or something. Too bad I don't have a second camcorder where I could just put it in the corner, point it at him. No, which I guess we can call her Janara, right? You stay the hell away from her. What about her? How would you describe her? I'm sorry. As a person, what is she like? What's going on here? She's a bit bratty, I guess. And she has a tendency to, when faced with a wall, to just hit it harder. Not exactly a people person. But ultimately, she's a good kid. She went out of her way to help us, literally crossed half of a half of the kingdom to reach us, all because she felt she owed us something. She got honor. Honor. I see. Thank you for your time, Mr. D. Khakis. You may leave. Good. Evening, Headmaster. Seriously, what was that all about? You're going back so soon? I need time to think. Also, if what Evelyn said is true, maybe there's some some hints in the city? I see. You should come too. Nah. What do you mean, nah? Even if I discover anything, what would it accomplish? I was already dealing with supposedly being someone else, but with tits. No, focusing on these kind of matters doesn't help anyone. It's not like I can go back. I think the best course of action for me right now is to just focus on becoming my own person. You've had plenty of time to do that. I haven't. I see. <laughs> okay, you're just staring at the door now, dog. Howie. <laughs> I'll be sure to contact you the moment I find something. Yeah, about that. How exactly are you going to do that? I don't know. <laughs> I knew it. Here. Don't throw things at people all of a sudden. Wait. This is one of those scroll things? Yep. Peak has reception, and thanks to your tender care, it still has functioning power grid. Thanks, Titania. Don't mention it. 
Think of it as a birthday present from Big Sis. Big Sister. Uh, I'm going to let you have this. Big Sister. Really? Yeah. It's a great present. Thank you. Even if I doubt you bought it with your own money. Ciao. So, what kind of person are you going to be, Titania? Well, talk about Lazy Sunday, huh? This... This is... This isn't fair. It was going to happen sooner or later, Penny. This is his school, after all. I don't want to be separated from you. None of you. I... I won't. Like, we're going to let that happen. Penny, calm down. We're going to deal with this. But how? For the same reasons why Osmond didn't just immediately expel me from Beacon. First, there are loopholes in the rules he himself created and observes. And second, we have allies, remember? I won't accept this, Osmond. I see you saw the slip. Your compliance isn't really a factor, Glinda. As headmaster, I can, can't expel students based on disciplinary sanctions without your approval. But at the end of the year, it is my right to let go ones that haven't shown sufficient prowess in their studies. So you're going to use their lack of grades from their first from the first semester? I will. Do you have any idea what you're doing, Ospin? I'm addressing a liability in my own school, Glinda. So the great headmaster Osbin is going this far against a teen who only wants to defend himself and his friends? His intent notwithstanding, there's enough of him on our plate as it is, Glinda. And when is the plate going to be anything but full, Osbin? Because while stopping Sable may be important, the rest of Marin keeps turning. There will be no remnant to turn if she gets her way. And if we ignore everything else going on around us, there will be no one left to turn with it. Gr the Grim, the Schnee Company, Bandits, the White Fang, and now Peak. How many things must pile up before we decide that Salem isn't the current biggest threat to life on Remnant, Ospin? There will never be a bigger threat to Remnant than her, Glinda. Very wrong! <laughs> Very, very, very wrong. <laughs> so we're at an impasse. As I was with Mr. Dikakis, yes. I shall act consequently then. Never a bigger threat. And as he watches Rick and Ironwood's video, yeah, even he's starting to doubt himself now at this point. I don't think I've forgotten anything, except the matter with Janara and Titania. You sure it's not something that we should know about? It's nothing that would give us any advantage or reveal anything new about our enemies enemy other than the depths of their depravity. As such, I respect their wishes on of wanting to be the ones to reveal it to everyone else once they wish to do so. I'll trust you on that then. And thanks for the report. Were you supposed to rest? I am. Knowing that my partner has everything well in hand puts me in the required ease to recuperate comfortably. I drop this into his lap at the drop of a hat after all. I see. I shall leave you to your recuperation then. Thanks, Amber. Have a good night. What? What is... It... It hurts. No. No, huh? <laughs>
That's how he's hanging around my door. Great. <sighs> well, does it look good on me even with the white hair? It still looks great, Evelyn. What she said, you look almost as good as me. Ha, <laughs> you wish that you were true. That were true. <laughs> Glad to have you back, Ev. Let's go to class now. Monday, day 127. I got some things to do. A lot of things to do. First, I'll end this part here.